Welcome to Stories from the Driver's Seat. It was nearly dusk when Emily passed the old wooden sign that read, Autumnville, population 312. The road had been unusually empty for miles, just a stretch of endless forest flanking her small sedan. She glanced at her phone to see if she had signal, still nothing. She had been driving all day, heading back home after a weekend retreat in the mountains and made the wrong turn somewhere. She hadn't seen a gas station in hours. Autumnville wasn't on any map, she remembered, but something about it seemed vaguely familiar, as though she had heard whispers of the place before. The town itself was nestled in a small valley, the last glow of the sunset casting long shadows over the quaint, old-fashioned houses. It looked like a town stuck in the 1950s, with brick buildings, rusty lamp posts, and narrow streets. There was something unnerving about how still everything was, as though the town was holding its breath. No cars, no people, just silence. Emily's car sputtered to a stop as she pulled into what looked like the main square. It was then she realized her fuel gauge was on E. Perfect timing, she muttered, grabbing her phone, Still no signal. As she stepped out of the car, the air felt thick, almost suffocating. There was a strange chill to it, though it was a warm autumn evening. She glanced around, hoping to find someone, anyone, to help her. The streets were deserted. The windows of the nearby buildings were dark, and it felt like hundreds of eyes were watching her from behind the curtains. Hello, she called her voice echoing eerily. No response. The only sound was the wind rushing through the nearby trees. Emily noticed a gas station at the far end of the street. It looked abandoned, but it was her only hope. She started walking toward it, her footsteps sounding too loud on the cracked pavement. As she passed one of the houses, she saw movement inside, a figure in the window watching her. She froze for a moment but the shadowy form slipped away before she could make out any details. Feeling uneasy, she quickened her pace. The gas station was as run down as she had expected. The old pumps were rusted and the door to the small store creaked as she pushed it open. Inside, the air was stale and the shelves were coated in dust. An ancient radio crackled in the corner, playing a low, static-filled tune Anyone here? She asked again, this time more warily. A man appeared from behind the counter, startling her. He was hunched over, his face hidden by a wide-brimmed hat. His clothes looked as though they hadn't been washed in decades, and there was something unsettling about the way he moved. Slow and deliberate, like each step was a struggle. Need gas? His voice was low and gravelly, almost a growl. Uh, yeah, my car's out of fuel. Is there a way I can get a fill-up? Emily asked, trying to stay calm. He nodded slowly, gesturing to the pump outside. Self-serve. Cash only. She hesitated. She didn't have much cash on her. Who carried cash these days? But she quickly pulled out what she had, handing it to him. He didn't count it, just slipped it into his pocket and shuffled to the door muttering something under his breath as he left her alone in the store. Feeling a cold dread creeping up her spine, Emily quickly filled her tank, her eyes darting nervously around the street. The figure from the window earlier still weighed heavily on her mind. Something wasn't right about this town. Just as she finished, she noticed a faded poster stapled to a wooden post nearby. It was a missing persons flyer from what appeared to be decades ago. The woman in the photograph looked eerily familiar, almost like a reflection of herself. The name beneath it was Emily, and she felt her heart pound faster. She looked around again, a rising sense of panic gripping her. As she turned back toward her car, the street seemed different. The lamp posts had flickered on, casting an unsettling orange glow over the town, but the shadows between the buildings seemed darker, 
thicker, and there were more figures now, watching her from the windows. She rushed back into her car, her hands trembling as she fumbled with the keys. The engine sputtered to life, and she sped off, leaving the gas station and its eerie attendant behind. As she drove, the narrow road twisted deeper into the town. She tried turning back toward the highway, but no matter which street she took, she always ended up back at the square. Panic set in. Every building looked the same, every turn leading her in circles. The town seemed to be warping, shifting, trapping her. The shadows on the street grew longer, reaching for her car. She could hear whispers now, faint, chilling voices seeping into her mind. Suddenly, her headlights caught movement up ahead. A group of people stood in the middle of the street, blocking her path. Their faces were obscured by shadows, but they were all staring directly at her. She slammed on the brakes, heart pounding and reversed, but her rear view mirror showed more figures approaching from behind. They were closing in on her, slowly, deliberately, like they had all the time in the world. She tried honking, yelling for them to move, but they didn't respond. Instead, they began to move closer, their faces still hidden. The only sound was the soft whisper of the wind and the creak of her car's engine. Then one of them stepped forward into the light. It was the man from the gas station, but something was wrong. His face, it was decayed, almost skeletal, his eyes sunken and hollow. The others stepped into the light too, revealing their ghastly appearances rotting skin, empty eyes, twisted features. They were the dead, residents of Autumnville long forgotten. Suddenly her car stalled. She frantically twisted the key in the ignition, but nothing happened. The figures drew closer, their dead eyes fixed on her. The whispers grew louder, turning into a chorus of voices, all saying the same thing. You were always meant to return, Emily screamed as the nearest figure reached out and touched her window. The glass frosted over instantly, ice creeping across the surface despite the warm autumn night. She tried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. The figures surrounded the car now, their faces pressed against the windows, their breath fogging the glass. Then in the reflection, Emily saw something that made her blood run cold. Behind her, sitting in the back seat, was another figure. Her exact reflection, decayed and lifeless, staring back at her with hollow eyes. The last thing she heard, before everything went black, was a voice, cold and distant, whispering in her ear, Welcome home. That's how Emily disappeared into the legend of Autumnville, a town where those who wander in are never seen again. Some say it's a place where lost souls gather, where the living are lured in to join the dead. Others believe it's a town trapped in time, cursed to repeat the same hour of twilight over and over, forever drawing in the unfortunate souls who take the wrong turn. But one thing is certain, once you enter Autumnville, you never leave. This story is fictional and for entertainment purposes only. Thank you for following along with me. If you would like to hear more stories like this, go to my playlist titled Stories from the Driver's Seat. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you for watching and I genuinely appreciate you all.